Good morning, everyone, and welcome to NJBIA Live from the State Capitol. I'm Vinny Civitello, Communications Manager for the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. With us today is our very own Vice President of Government Affairs, Frank Robinson. A few housekeeping matters before we get started. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be emailed to you tomorrow along with the PowerPoint for today's presentation, so be on the lookout for those. I'd also like to draw your attention to the questions tab. Frank would be happy to take all of your questions, so don't hesitate to write them in as they come to you, and that's important as they come to you, because if you don't write them in when you think of them, you might forget what you wanted to know by the time we hit the Q&A. So now let's get things started. Frank? Good morning, everyone. Um, pleasure to be with you live from the State Capitol, and thank you to my producer, Vinny Civitello. As always, he does a great job. There's one thing I've got to uh, take a little uh, issue with. I may not answer all of your questions today. It depends upon what those questions will be. But let's get started. We are in a new day, in a new way, in a new NJ here at uh, – Trenton High School, as I like to call it. Um, we have a new administration. As you all know, we had Phil Murphy sworn in as the uh, new governor of the state of New Jersey last week on January 16th. Um, we also had the swearing in of uh, our newest lieutenant governor, uh, Sheila Oliver, former speaker of the General Assembly, and she'll also be our new commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs. Um, was a uh, uh, a big rousing celebration for Governor Murphy and the Lieutenant Governor at the War Memorial Building here in town. It was an overflow crowd of almost 2,000 people. And um, Governor Murphy gave about a uh, very nice uh, one hour approximately inaugural address, and he was uh, interrupted 54 times by my count uh, with applause. Uh, the Lieutenant Governor gave about a eight to 10 minute speech and a very nice speech, and she was interrupted 20 times during her time. So they were both welcome to Trenton, and uh, so now we have the Murphy administration. Uh, that day, the governor um, had his first cabinet meeting, uh, signed the first of four executive officers, and uh, had named, by that point in time, designated most of his cabinet. For those of you who are uh, NJBIA members and watchers, if you go onto uh, our website or go onto our app, NJBIA, on either uh, Google or uh, Apple, uh, and just download NJBIA. We are keeping it up to date on a daily basis. In there you will find under the section of the executive branch uh, in the cabinet pictures of the new cabinet designees. Um, we have most of them but every day we get more and so we'll be putting them up. But give you an idea of who the new cabinet is. The governor uh, elect, uh, excuse me, Governor Murphy um, had uh, nominated and had confirmed the first Sikh Attorney General uh, in, of any state uh, in the history of the country. Um, the new Attorney General was uh, given a hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, on swearing-in day, which was January 16th, and was confirmed by the entire Senate. So we do have a, uh, an Attorney General in place. And um, the, as the weeks go by, the Senate will start interviewing all the governor's designees. Um, they'll all be, they've all been vetted. They're currently being by the governor. They'll be vetted by the state Senate and uh, um, voted on in the Judiciary Committee and then the full House. So over the next uh, few weeks and months, um, we should have a, a full cabinet. In the meantime, uh, everyone that the governor has designated uh, has the title of acting. And you will see those titles on our website. Also, most of them are up on the new state website, which I'm going to take you to now. And uh, my producer will tell me how I'm going to do this. No problem. Uh, hit escape. I hit escape on your screen. screen. Hold on. And then uh, the Chrome icon, the okay. red, yellow, the green Chrome icon. icon. And then we're going to go. The, the It still has the same address, so it's nj.gov. And if you go there, the officials, most of you have done in the past, the official site of the state of New Jersey now has a new look because we have a new governor. Um, 
There are a number of new things on the homepage that you might find uh, interesting and helpful uh, in your business. They are populating this um, with new information every day. But if we go up to the top and um, go to, where am I going? I wanted to show you where you can find all the new cabinets. And I'm not finding it right now. Hmm. Oh, here we go. If you go up to administration, then there is a list of the cabinet officers. Now, these are in alphabetical by department, um, and we'll just go through each one briefly. The Board of Public Utilities is first, then Civil Service Commission, then Department of Agriculture. Many of you know Joe Fiordaliso has served as the uh, a member of the uh, commissioner on the Board of Public Utilities oh, for many, many years now, about 12 years. Joe was just uh, nominated by uh, the governor to be the president of the Board of Public Utilities, uh, someone who's been very fair and balanced while he's been on BPU. And uh, NJBIA has had a great relationship with Joe, and we look forward to working with him and the other commissioners. Um, Civil Service Commission is, uh, you know what, I'm not going to go through all these. You can go through them yourselves in terms of the bios on everybody. We know we have a new face and a lot of new faces uh, coming in. We have some uh, people who are shifting over. Uh, like Assemblywoman Moyo from Trenton is going to be the uh, new treasurer of the state of New Jersey. We wish her well. That will create a vacancy uh, there in her seat. And there's a spirited contest going on right now on who will be the new Assemblywoman or Assemblyman from that seat. Um, Diane uh, Scassetti is uh, a, uh, a long time. Uh, she's been down in Florida the last couple of years, but she worked at our Department of Transportation uh, for a number of years and at some of the transportation authorities, and we welcome her, her back. Not posted on the website yet is the new Chief Executive o Officer for the uh, Economic Development Authority, EDA. Governor announced the other day a gentleman named Tim Sullivan, who is currently the Deputy Commissioner of Economic Development in Connecticut, will be heading up the EDA. And uh, by uh, all uh, information that we have, um, he's done a great job both there in Connecticut and he also worked uh, in uh, the administration of Mayor Bloomberg in New York. Uh, and he is uh, very, very qualified for that position. Additionally, um, the governor named a new executive director of the New Jersey Transit. Uh, as you're all aware, during the campaign, um, candidate Murphy was rather critical of the way that New Jersey Transit um, has been run. And so um, he has designated uh, a gentleman named Kevin Corbett, um, who is the vice president of a company called ACOM, which is specializes in transportation infrastructure, but also economic development around that uh, infrastructure. And so we welcome him to New Jersey also. And just yesterday, I understand the governor designated uh, the current mayor of Belmar, New Jersey, over at the shore, um, uh, Mayor Darty to be the new head of the Motor Vehicle Commission, and uh, we wish him well. And so as we get more information, uh, we will post that on that uh, app that we have. Um, it's a great thing. Everybody knows we produce our little book every couple of years, but uh, the app is uh, much more current, much more up to date, and we urge all of you to click on that and get all the information that you need. Um, so just a, a number of commissioners we know here at uh, NJBIA, and we've already had conversations with them. Um, Commissioner McCabe over at DEP, uh, Commissioner Ansaro, Azaro, uh, Angelo Robb is a new commissioner over the Department of Labor and Workforce Development, and uh, we've already had a meeting with him, and we know that we'll have a good working relationship. So in the governor's first uh, week as uh, our new chief executive, he has signed four executive orders, and um, you can see them on his website. They cover uh, an audit of New Jersey Transit. 
Um, he is uh, very concerned about where all the money has gone and uh, is going to uh, keep a close eye on that. He also signed an executive, the first executive order he signed on his first day in office was about uh, equal pay for women. Um, his executive order uh, states that um, from this point forward, uh, any potential state employee will not be asked their current or uh, salary level or their salary history and so that people can start fresh. Um, that is not legislation yet. BIA has had concern about the legislation. We are absolutely uh, in favor of equal pay for equal work. There's been too much of a disparity for way too long. We've just been concerned about some of the legislation in the past. Um, basically, really on the fines uh, for companies for inadvertently doing some things, we have no problem with following the law, but sometimes the fines are very, very excessive, um, especially when it's inadvertent uh, actions. And so we'll be working with the new administration and the legislature on that very important issue. In addition, the governor signed uh, on his first day uh, an executive order on ethics. Uh, he did that during his first cabinet meeting, making sure that the administration is transparent and uh, you can go to the governor's website if you're interested in seeing all the specifics on that. And then uh, last but not least, yesterday the governor signed an executive order on uh, a review of the uh, New Jersey's medical marijuana policy. Um, there are some that um, thought that um, New Jersey's uh, medical marijuana program was too restrictive uh, in terms of both the location and the requirements in order to uh, get prescriptions for medical marijuana. So the governor is having that looked at, which will bring us to an issue um, that I wanted to talk about briefly, and that's the whole issue of legalization of marijuana. Um, there's been a lot of talk about that the last couple of years uh, here in Trenton. We had a delegation of legislators who went out to Colorado, I guess it was um, beginning of last year, last spring, uh, to investigate how legalized marijuana has been affecting that, that state. A uh, number of them have come back saying that it's something that we should do here in the state of New Jersey, uh, has the potential of raising a lot of revenue um, for the state uh, through taxes on legal marijuana. Marijuana. We here at the Business and Industry Association have not taken a position on that issue for lots of different reasons, but we do have some concerns. Uh, we don't know what the final legislation would be. We've been contacted by a lot of our employers that are concerned about the effect it would have on employees in the workplace if marijuana was legalized. Um, so it's an issue that we're going to keep a very, very close eye on for the business community, and we'll be working with the administration and with the legislature uh, on that. In the meantime, some people have been talking about instead of legalizing marijuana, perhaps decriminalizing it and also strengthening the medical marijuana program in the state of New Jersey, which the governor-elect has taken the first uh, step on that. So uh, before I go on to some other issues, let me talk briefly about the new legislature. A uh, new legislature was sworn in a week before the governor on January the 9th. Um, the Senate president is uh, remains uh, Senator Steve Sweeney, who's been president of the Senate for perhaps the last 10 years, about the last 10 years, I guess. And in the assembly, we have a new speaker of the General Assembly, uh, Assemblyman Craig Kaufman from uh, the 19th District in Middle Sex County. Um, he was elected unanimously uh, by his colleagues on um, their swearing in day, January 9th. There are a lot of new uh, members of uh, both houses of the legislature. There were a lot of retirements, as you all recall, um, this past year. There are some new committee chairs and new members of the leadership. There's even a new committee been formed in the General Assembly, one that Business and Industry Association is really excited about. It's the Science, Technology, and Innovation Committee that will be that is being chaired by Assemblyman Andrew Zwicker, uh, a PhD who some people refer to as a real rocket scientist. A uh, very bright guy has been very active. Uh, 
with uh, working with BIA and the business community on innovation issues and also uh, manufacturing, and we look forward to working with him in that new committee. Um, as you're all aware, and as we went through the last time we did one of these webinars, um, the Democrats picked up some seats this time around, and so there are now, um, let me click to another slide. So Minnie's going to help me get out of this you thing. Go back to PowerPoint at the bottom. At the bottom, I do what? Uh, you click on the PowerPoint logo. PowerPoint. PowerPoint. We're back to and then PowerPoint. From current slide. And then I'm going to go to current slide. And we're going to go there. We have uh, the makeup of the 218th legislature uh, in the Assembly, 54 Democrats and 26 Republicans. In the State Senate, 50, uh, 25 Democrats and 15 Republicans. Um, both houses have announced their committees, and um, they've just started committee meetings at uh, the end of last week, uh, this week. And BIA, I think we're already, all the bills that are introduced, we're already tracking uh, about 1,000 of them so far, and it's, it's just the beginning. We have some uh, issues that we're concerned about um, that we're looking at uh, in the last couple of days. The, uh, on Monday, the Senate Environment Committee is going to take up the um, nuclear uh, power bill again. If you'll recall in the uh, lame duck, there was a vote on that bill in the uh, Senate, but there was not one in the Assembly. We know that the legislature is uh, looking at the whole issue again uh, about how do we uh, preserve nuclear power in New Jersey and also at the same time uh, have our uh, rates be competitive. Um, we will be testifying on that bill again on Monday, and um, we look forward to getting any input from our members on that. And uh, at this point in time, as I say, there's no movement in the General Assembly, but we're told that there will be shortly. Uh, and the governor is, uh, is working with the legislature on that. Um, so now I'm going to go to... Um, some of the issues. I mentioned briefly uh, about the equal pay for women uh, and that the governor signed an executive order um, on his uh, first day about that issue. And um, there will be some new legislation dropped in. And as I mentioned, um, we are all in favor of equal pay for women. Um, that is the right thing to do. And uh, we would like to think, and I'm going to say that the vast majority, if not all, of our 20,000 member companies um, are uh, do have equal pay policies. But as I mentioned also, as this legislation works its way through both houses, um, we are always concerned about any of the mandates on businesses in the workplace, about what the fines and penalties are. In some instances, in uh, state law, there are fines of up to $10,000 for a first offense, whether it's inadvertent or not, um, for companies. And uh, we find that a little um, excessive. And uh, in some cases, a second offense is as much as $25,000. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that issue. Um, Next is paid sick leave. Um, it's an issue that's been around for quite some time. We do have a number of uh, municipalities in the state of New Jersey who have passed their own regulations uh, for their towns. Um, it is not consistent. As I said, there's differences in, uh, in, in the various towns. If we were to have a patch quilt of 500 plus um, paid sick leave ordinances in towns, it would be confusion for the entire state and our business community. And we've always believed that the one size fit all remedy does not work. Every company is different. Every employee's situation is different. And um, we are in um, agreement with a lot of the labor unions in the state that this is something that should be negotiated between employers and employees, whether it's um, with a, a company that has a union contract or whether it's non-union employees. This is something that needs to be worked out between employers and employees, and we'll be uh, keeping an eye. Uh, there's no current uh, movement on that bill, but we have a feeling it will uh, happen sometime this year. And so millionaire's tax, a lot of you have heard of uh, that over the years. BIA has always been opposed to this because we believe that a millionaire's tax, whether it's 
on a true millionaire or whether it's on half a millionaire or three quarters of a millionaire is really a tax on small businesses. So many of our members um, who are sole proprietors or very, very small companies pay their uh, their business tax in quote through the state income tax and an increase in the state income tax, which has been said now for anything over a million dollars would go from 8.9% to 10.75% for any income over a million dollars. And that will put a great hardship on a lot of the small businesses here in New Jersey. Um, Governor Murphy has talked wanting it to um, give additional funding to education. Um, uh, issues such as um, universal daycare, uh, free college tuition, and at this point in time, the business community believes that they uh, pay enough in taxes, and in, especially in light of what's going to happen in New Jersey over the federal tax reform, still a lot of big unknown out there in New Jersey in terms of what can be deducted now uh, in the new limits and caps that are going to affect a lot of the states in the Northeast. So um, we concur with Senate President Sweeney um, that we really need to look at the whole tax structure for New Jersey and um, decide where we go from here without starting to raise taxes. Let's talk about um, how we can reform the uh, tax structure in New Jersey. As we started last year in a bipartisan effort with Governor Christie and the legislature in terms of eliminating the estate tax, um, reducing the tax on pensions in, in, in the state of New Jersey is all part of that tax reform package. Uh, the BIA was very supportive of And so we look forward to working with the, the governor and the uh, legislature on that. And the millionaire's tax will become part of the whole budget discussion. And the budget um, right now, as you all know, the governor gives a uh, state of the state address, which Chris Christie gave his last one on January the 9th. The new governor uh, will give his uh, budget message. Right now, it's tentatively scheduled for February the 27th. I'm not sure if that's the hard date yet, um, but um, whenever that is, end of February, beginning of March, is the kickoff to the um, the annual budget uh, discussion here in New Jersey. As you all know, we need to have a uh, balanced budget in effect by July 1. Unfortunately, there are just two years in recent times, including last year, when um, get, we had a shutdown government because the governor and the legislature could not reach an agreement. We are very, very hopeful uh, and encourage both the governor and the legislature to work together so that we do have a budget on time this year, and that process will start in the next month or two. Greenhouse gas. Um, this is something also government, uh, Governor Murphy has been very much in favor of. We have opposed uh, rejoining the regional gas, uh, greenhouse gas initiative for a number of years. Uh, New Jersey is a leader in curbing emissions and uh, producing clean power. And we're always concerned about the increase in costs once there's more regulations. And uh, the, But the state Senate is already moving on that and uh, released a bill just um, two days ago. And so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Our Sarah Bloom is an expert in that area and uh, she is out educating people of our position. And so minimum wage, it's also something that's been in the news a lot. It was also a big issue during the campaign for governor. Um, New Jersey is among a, a number of states that is moving in this direction. We here at BIA have been uh, for years uh, asking everybody to slow down a little bit. Um, Governor Murphy and the legislative leadership have already said they realize that we cannot go and have an immediate raise uh, uh, to $15 an hour in New Jersey. Our current minimum wage, the state minimum wage, is I believe $8.66. Federal minimum wage is $7.25. Um, there is no state in the nation who at this point in time, statewide has gone to $15 minimum wage, which California is going to do shortly. And in the state of New York, they basically have a bifurcated minimum wage law, which has New York City and environs at one higher rate. And then the rest of New York State, um, they have at a lower rate. And that's the kind of thing, quite frankly, we're not necessarily looking at regional 
uh, minimum wages in the state of New Jersey, but we have a lot of different industries um, that will be negatively impact if we went immediately to $15 minimum wage. Um, as you'll see on the screen, we have, could there possibly be exemptions for seasonal workers and for teenagers? We know that um, Senator Sweeney is very much concerned about the impact of any minimum wage raise on the agriculture uh, industry in the state of New Jersey, um, of whether or not our produce, we are the garden state and we produce a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, would be adversely affected if we raised uh, the minimum wage there, especially um, to $15 an hour. So this is all things that are under discussion. Uh, BIA is uh, having discussions with the fellow members, our fellow members in the, the business community, with members of the legislation, and we have really been and insisting that any discussion about minimum wage includes the issue of job training and workforce development. Um, one of my favorite commercials is, and I'm not pitching McDonald's uh, in the world, is uh, one of the commercials they have for McDonald's and about them getting their uh, workers off to college and their tagline is McDonald's, America's best first job. We believe that um, we should raise people up uh, and get them the right kind of skills and initiatives so that they don't have to worry about a minimum wage job, so that they can get good, um, higher, much higher paying jobs because they have the skill set that the employers need. And so let's see what else. Workforce development, I just touched on that a little bit. We are very, very much engaged in that and have been for years. Uh, we've worked very closely with the Department of Education, the community colleges, the Department of Labor and Workforce Development um, in trying to get um, everyone on the same page about putting folks on a pathway uh, to a good career and we will continue that work under the Murphy administration and uh, many of you are aware of the basic skills training program that BIA put together with the County College Consortium and the Department of Labor about 10 years ago. This in 2017 we had our 10th anniversary of that program and as you can see and I think those numbers may even be higher in that uh, over the course of that 10 years we've had uh, about 7,000 companies participating and getting all kind of training for their employees. It's the most successful training program in the history of the state of New Jersey. And this is for people that are currently employed. And many of you have heard me talk about it before. We um, get employers to get their employees trained by the community colleges, which do a great job in things like upgrading their computer skills, customer service, um, math, more advanced mathematics, uh, various language skills, uh, bilingual uh, Spanish and English skills. Great, great program. You can check that out on our website. And let's see, I think I've talked on for quite a bit. Um, now we'll uh, have Mr. Civitella open it up to see if we have any questions. Thanks, Frank. Um, we actually don't have any questions just yet, so I'll stall a little bit of time here while we give people a chance to write something in. Um, while I'm doing that, I'd like to take a second to remind you about the handouts tab. We get a lot of questions from people about how they can download the PowerPoint slides. So just open the tab marked Handouts in your GoToWebinar panel, and the file is right there, LFTSC with today's date. We don't try to name these things cryptically. That's live from the state capitol. And there's the Questions tab right underneath that. Um, just If you have a question, type it in right there, and I'll make sure Frank answers it. And don't be shy. You've got a real expert here, so make sure to take advantage of them. Um, I guess I could get the ball rolling myself. Uh, Frank, you mentioned... Uh, we had some changes in committee chairs and new leadership. Are you able to share with us who they are? Sure. Well, as I did mention, uh, Steve Sweeney is the uh, returning president of the state senate and also Loretta Weinberg, who has been the senate majority uh, leader for uh, a number of years. They were she were both reelected by their caucuses, so they will serve in that position for at least the next two years. And over on the Republican side, Senator Tom Kane Jr. was uh, reelected as the uh, minority leader in the state Senate, and Assemblyman uh, John Bramnick is uh, going to re has returned as the leader of the Republicans in the General Assembly. And I did mention we have a new uh, speaker in the General Assembly, uh, Craig Coughlin. Um, who replaced Hudson County Assemblyman Vinnie Prieto as speaker. And then um, 
is an interesting point. Many of you already know this. Former Mercer County Assemblyman Skip Semino, who also served in Governor Florio's cabinet and has had a distinguished career as a hospital president and advocate for lots of different causes, was named as the executive director of the uh, Assembly Majority Office. So Skip is returning to town uh, and to government uh, where he is uh, greatly respected and um, the, the Assembly Democrats are lucky to have uh, my old friend Skip Semino. Also in the Assembly, we have a new chairwoman of the Assembly Budget Committee that handles the state budget every year, and that's Assemblywoman Elena Pinter Marin. And we congratulate her on that, and um, we look forward to working her on the budget. Assemblywoman Nancy Pinkin, district um, in Middlesex County, is the new chairwoman of the Assembly Environment and Solid Waste Committee. Assemblywoman Pam Lampett of uh, Camden County is the new chairwoman of the Assembly Education Committee. And I mentioned earlier, Assemblyman Andrew Zwicker is the uh, chair of the new Science, Technology, and Innovation Committee. Over in the Senate, uh, some of the new committee chairs are Senator Bob Gordon from Bergen County is the new chairman of the Senate Transportation Committee. Senator Nilsa Cruz Perez of Camden is the chairwoman of the Senate Economic Growth Committee. Senator Pat Dignan of Middlesex County is chair of the Senate Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. Uh, Senator Jim, Jim Beach uh, was recently appointed as chairman of the Senate State Government Wagering Tourism and Historic Preservation Committee. As a matter of fact, um, one of our staff people here at NJBIA, Daniela Velez, and I uh, testified before Senator Beach's committee last month on uh, asking the Senate to uh, ask Congress to find a answer to the dreamers problem that's going for right now in the news uh, all over the country. We have 22,000 DACA kids, uh, young people here in the state of New Jersey. Daniela is one of them, and she is a very, very articulate spokeswoman for that uh, issue. We're glad to have her here on our team at NJBIA. She does a lot of our outreach to Hispanic businesses in the state, and we want to thank Senator Beach for allowing us to testify. He allowed both of us to testify from the association, and uh, we hope that uh, Congress heeds the words of New Jersey and the rest of the country and take care of the DACA situation. We also have uh, Senator Brian Stack is the new chairman of the Legislative Oversight Committee. Now, just one thing too, Vinny, I want to let everybody know that there are going to be a number of vacancies once uh, some people are confirmed by the state Senate for Governor Murphy's cabinet. Uh, as we mentioned, Sheila Oliver is the new lieutenant governor, and she is also the uh, commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs. Um, so Sheila has had to resign her seat uh, from the General Assembly, where she served for the last dozen years or so from Essex County. And so there's a vacancy there that needs to be filled. Um, the new state treasurer, uh, Liz Moyo, um, has had to give up her seat uh, representing uh, the people of Trenton and, the, uh, and Ewing and the suburbs of, of Trenton. And also Assemblywoman Marlene Caridi, who was currently the, uh, the chairman of the Education Committee in the Assembly. Um, she is going to be the new commissioner at uh, Banking and Insurance, and so there will be a vacancy there. And so um, once all those formal resignations come through, the way that they are replaced in the legislature is that the county, the Democratic uh, County Committee uh, it meets in those particular legislative districts. They vote for someone to be the interim representative in the General Assembly until the next regular general election, which will be in November of 2018 when normally legislature is not on the ballot. Um, as everybody knows, 18 is normally a federal year and also lots of local elections, but the, we'll have a series of special elections this year. Excellent. Our first question comes from John, who would like to know, can you touch on the relationship between Murphy and the legislative leaders Sweeney and Coughlin to date? I take the Fifth Amendment on that one. Um, if you listen to um, the governor, he's got a great relationship with uh, the new leaders, um, and sometimes it doesn't see 
seem that way. Uh, we are all hopeful that they learn to get along, and, and I think that they will. Um, there will be give and take. Um, one of the things that new speaker Coughlin talked about when uh, he was sworn in as speaker on January the 9th is that he wanted to make sure that, uh, A, the legislature was seen as a co-equal branch of government, and uh, which it is uh, by our Constitution, along with um, judiciary at the three branches of government, um, and that also that uh, the Assembly uh, had a, a full seat at the table. Uh, in past uh, years, sometimes it would seem that um, one house or the other might be close to the governor, whether it was of their party or not. Um, there's always been a little rivalry, a healthy rivalry between the Senate and the General Assembly. Um, in my days working for the General Assembly, we would not refer to the state Senate as the upper house. We would refer to it as the smaller house, since they have 40 members and the General Assembly has the uh, has 80. And we would refer to the General Assembly as the people's house. And so there's always been that rivalry uh, going back uh, historically. And so I think since uh, you have a lot of new people in town, it's going to take a little while to everybody figure out uh, how they're going to work together. But from BIA's perspective and the business community's perspective and all the citizens in New Jersey, we ask my uh, um, my three fellow Irishmen to get along and do the right thing, and we believe they will. Our next question comes from Connor who would like to know any initial thoughts on the emergence of the first lady as an active participant in policymaking process? Our initial thoughts that I think it's going to be good for the state. Um, I have had the privilege of knowing the Murphy family for uh, uh, some period of time. Um, Tammy Snyder Murphy is um, a very intelligent, uh, very, um, dedicated person in terms of a, a whole bunch of issues and she and uh, Governor Murphy are truly a partnership their whole family works together and that's well known in circles in Monmouth County where they're from um, and they're neighbors to many of us over there that have been very very good on a lot of uh, public affairs kind of issues and charitable issues. And I think uh, Tammy brings a lot of things uh, to the table and um, there's no way anyone's going to keep her from that table. Um, she is a, a, a strong uh, independent woman who is in fact Phil's, excuse me, Governor Murphy's partner. And uh, I think she'd be an asset for the state. Our next question comes from Fred who asks, can BIA provide a list of all committee chairs and members so we can have this on one document? Now, real quick, I know that my colleague Joanne Degnan would love it if I put in a plug for the fact that that is all available in NJBIA's legislative directory app. She does an amazing job keeping that up to date. But I went on the app just now, and I know you have to click on each individual committee to get the chairs. Is there anywhere where someone can access one list of all of it together? We uh, as I said, we have been developing our app for the last couple of years, and um, quite frankly, we get a lot of our information through the service that we use right off the um, official app, uh, the, excuse me, the official website for the legislature. So if you uh, go to NJLEG, L-E-G, um, their website is very, very good. It's probably the most accurate because it's the official voice of the legislature. And right there, you can get all the updated information as it happens. We try to get as much as possible, and we're still working with our app. So we will take a look at that. Those of you who are familiar also, the, the app is an uh, offshoot of our traditional uh, legislative directory, which we produced, oh, I believe for 30 plus years uh, at BIA. And um, we produced it in limited quality quantities for 2017, and excuse me, 2017 legislative, 2017, excuse me, everyone. Um, the, oh, what was it? The 217th legislature that was um, 2016, 2017. We are now into the 218th legislature for this year and next. And so we are trying to make a decision, quite frankly, whether we're even going to produce the book going forward. Um, a lot of people like it. They like to carry it in their purse or their pocket. And uh, but quite frankly, the demand over the years for it has gone down and down and down because the moment that we print it, it is out of date. 
because there are always changes in the legislature, their staff, governor's cabinet, members of Congress we list in there. And um, trying to produce a new book is not cost efficient uh, once we go to press. And so this year we're trying to decide whether or not. So actually, I'd like to hear of anybody. Do you want us to continue uh, printing the book or would you prefer that we just keep the app? I mean, both of them take a lot of work. And uh, it's, I mean, quite frankly, in this day and age, almost everybody has a, a smartphone. And whether you have an Android or an Apple, um, you can get this app. Uh, and that one we keep very, very much up to date. And as I say, we're looking into various ways of constructing it to be incredibly, we think it's user friendly now, but we'll work on making it even more user friendly. Well, that's about all the questions we have, so it's probably as good a time as any to bring this to a close. Don't forget, all of you will be receiving a recording of today's webinar in the PowerPoint slides via email. Lastly, when you close out of the webinar, a survey will come up on your screen that we hope you'll fill out so we can understand how to best provide you important information in a webinar format. Our next NJBIA Live from the State Capitol will take place March 14th, so by all means, feel free to register for that one right on the homepage of our website, and we will see you there. So until next time, for Frank Robinson, this is Vinny Civitello wishing you a great day.